Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look here at the Premium Bandai Master Grade Dwaj Kai. Now this video is going to have the unboxing and the review all in one video, so if you don't care about the unboxing portion, you can just skip ahead to the review. But for now, let's get into it. As always, this is just going to have that monochrome box art all around it with it being a P-Bandai kit. And as always, thank you to USA Gundam Store for making this review possible. So if you want to check out USA Gundam Store, check the link down below in the video description. You can see what P-Bandai items they have available there and just everything else on the shop. You can save 10% off everything using the coupon code ZAKUREALIS10, which is also in the video description down there. So check that out. All right. So with this being a P-Bandai box, aside from this cool box art, as cool as it looks, it's just going to be monochrome there. But around the box, there's not really too much else to look at. Although I will point out the fact that this is in a pretty big box, very tall, deep box, and it also doesn't even close all the way. This, this is just, it, you got this bit here at the bottom because there's just a ton of stuff in here. Now I have previously built and reviewed the regular Master Grade Dwaj, which was also a P-Bandai kit. So this is basically a variant of that. So we've got a ton of parts in here, some old, some new, and obviously this part going to be definitely new are for that new cool bazooka that it has. So one reason why I really loved the Dwaj kit was because it was basically like a 1.5 version of the Master Grade. It had a lot of nice upgrades to the original Master Grade kit. And so this one is gonna be the same deal. We've got basically the original Master Grade DOM, but a lot of parts going to be upgraded for this version. But all right, so here on the front of the manual, you can see we got the box art there now in full color and it looks fantastic. You can see the original Dwaj there peeking out in the background. We've got the Dwaj Kai up here in front, of course. Going around onto the back, you can see how the color scheme is going to look in full there. And we've also got our decal guide here as well. Down at the bottom is the paint guide. So that's available in Japanese and English there and using uh, Mr. Color Paints as the reference for the colors for this. So with this being a P-Bandai kit, it's not really gonna have too much else to look at in the manual. It's just gonna get right down to business. So we've got the parts list up here in front, and once again, having a ton of leftover parts from the first few runners, as you can see, those being from the original DOM kit, including, once again, it looks like the Rakuten Bazooka, which you have all the parts for, I believe, like we did for the regular Dwaj, if I remember correctly. We did have all the parts to make that, which is pretty cool. As you can see, we just have a ton of runners with this, and as you can see from how big and full the box is, but to just go on through the construction, we have the same uh, heat tomahawk as used with the regular Dwaj, but what we have new with this is the beam cannon and just the overall styling. There's a lot of parts different there up around the upper body. So it just goes through the construction and then in our final pages there, just the weapons and how to equip the weapons. That's it for the manual. Let's run through the runners then. So with this kit, we've got no foil stickers, no decal stickers, no dry transfers. We've only got water slide decals and that's what I love to see. That's what I do love about P-Bandai kits is that we get these nice water slides. Now it's pretty minimal in this case, really only a few, mostly white caution markings. We've got a couple of Xeon logos there in yellow and white. All right, so first up, we've got a polycap runner here, PC121 for a whole bunch of polycaps here in gray. We've got our 100 scale MP2 manipulators here. So you got the fully articulated hands for this. So no runner A, but runner B here in dark blue is of course from the original DOM kit. So until further notice, these are all just old runners from the original DOM. Skipping over runner C and onto runner D here, also in this dark navy color. Runner E is in this nice dark deep red color. Runner F here in gray, some of the inner frame and detail parts from the original kit. Runner G as well in gray, and you can see there are the parts for the Rakuten Bazooka as well as some parts for the underside of the feet. Runner H, the main parts for the lower legs, we're gonna use just only two of these. Runner J, some more of the gray joint and detail parts from the original kit. We've got two of this J runner. And Runner K as well, some more dark red parts for a bunch of the smaller parts of the original kit. And then the last of the parts from the original Master Grade Dom here is Runner M, just some more polycaps here in gray. And we're skipping to runner R1 here for some of the new parts. Well, new for the original Dwaj. These aren't new for this specific kit quite yet. And we do also have a runner R2 as well for a copy of this section up here. Runner S here is our only four color runner with this kit. We've got a couple of clear pink parts there up at the top, some dark blue out throughout the center, a couple of dark red parts at the bottom, and then that bright fluorescent yellow part up there for the heat saber. Runner T here in gray is some of the new frame and joint parts around on the kit. We've got two of of this T runner. Runner U1 here is some more parts for the new hip joints mostly and then runner U2 as well is some more detail parts as well as parts for the axe there. And interestingly these runners aren't marked as Dwaj as the other new runners are but they're just marked as MS09. Then we have runner V1 which is some of our orange parts and V2 which is the larger version usually it's reversed but in this case 
we got some more parts here on B2. Now these ones are marked just Dwa, just so you can see it's kind of weird the way that they labeled the runners for this, but I love this orange color. And then once again marked simply MG100 scale MS09, runner W here is our clear parts for the kit. And you'll notice these two are the parts from the original Dwaj version, and then this far over here are the new parts for this kit. So you can see the visor is a little bit different, and then we also have the new clear part for the bazooka. Runner X here in deep red is the first runner that is totally new for this kit. Specifically, this runner is marked Dwaj Kai over there, you can see. So this is going to be some new parts for the head and a couple other detail parts new for this version. And then runner Y here, back to gray, is again all new parts for this version of the kit. The big, huge parts there for the beam cannon. And finally, Finally, runner Z1 here in Dark Navy, and Z2 for a copy of this section down here for the new shoulder parts. And that's it for the runners. So as far as the parts and the runners themselves, it's really about like half and half, old and new, but it's actually probably going to be more new than old in this case, because you have a lot of new parts with this kit from the original DOM. So while there's a little bit of original DOM still left in here, we got a lot new to enjoy. So let me get this all built up and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, so here's how it looks when it's all put together. Very cool, and if you guys missed the live stream build of this, you can go back and check that out. I did build this live. And once again, it's a pretty fun build. I enjoyed building the original DOM, as I've said many times. I still feel like the original Master Grade DOM kit, despite its old age, still holds up pretty well. But then when I built the original Dwaj, I thought, man, this is great. It's like all the best parts of the original DOM, but then they took the parts that were maybe lacking a little bit, some parts of the frame that they redid in the hip section, in the shoulder section, and in the ankle section, they redid the frame parts for those, and so it's updated, some new parts of articulation, it has new frame in the forearms as well. So everything that they updated from the original DOM is great as well, and so the original Dodge is a lot of fun to build, and then this one as well, because you have a lot of the parts from the uh, Dodge, of course, but then you have some of the new parts there. The new shoulder parts are awesome, I love those. I love the added fuel tanks on the back of the leg and the backpack as well. Such a cool just part of the design that I really appreciate. And both versions have that. The back skirt as well is just a really cool part of the design. So the Dwaj, the Dwaj Custom, whichever version, both of them look really cool, I think. For now, let's go through some of the accessories you get with the kit and talk a little bit about the articulation. Then we'll take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison between the two. So, of course, we got the traditional heat saber here. And this has a little bit there in the handle, which will flip out to plug into the fully articulated hands. I love the look of this. The really super bright fluorescent yellow looks really great. And then you have the connector piece for that. Now, on this kit, this connects here onto the side of the shoulder. But on the original Dwaj, it connects onto the backpack there. So if you did want to customize this or something, you're not using this particular shoulder armor. You want to just plug this onto the backpack. You can plug that on there. But as is with this particular kit, obviously, that's blocked now. So this is just plugged on here onto the side of the shoulder and I should also mention that you can plug this onto either shoulder either the right or the left but according to the manual it's supposed to be on this side that just opens up slide this down into there close that back up like that and there you go stored up on the shoulder like so then we also have the heat tomahawk which is really cool looking but I kind of wish that this would also have heated parts or like yellow parts or I don't know if they're exactly what color they should be at least separate parts so they could be painted separately a little bit, a little bit easier without having to mask that but I just think it could have been cool if the actual edge part of that was in bright yellow to match the heat saber there but anyway this one also just has a little tab which will fold out there in the handle that will plug into the hand either the left or the right side as you can see it's got the kind of energy cable which will go on this side on this side it has this weird connection pit that looks like that's supposed to like meant to like slot into somewhere for storage but it just doesn't and can't find anywhere on the kit and can't find anywhere in the manual where that's meant to plug onto the kit anywhere. And it was the same thing with the original Dwaj, because this one is not, uh, this weapon is not original to this kit. It's the same one used by the original Dwaj. So I don't know what the deal is with that connector piece. <laughs> Again, if one of you guys know, then let me know. But anyway, this just plugs into the hand and works really well. Then of course his main weapon here is the beam cannon, which is essentially just two huge halves sandwiched together. So you will have a seam line down a lot of this, but then you have a cool clear part there in there for the lens. You have a separate part for this front handle, which will move up and down like that. The main handle, which will move up and down a little bit like that. And once again, we have a little tab there in the handle for plugging into the hand. Then you have a separate piece then for like the end piece there, which all comes together to look really cool, a really interesting style weapon. Again, I think just like with this kit in general, really kind of captures the double Zeta vibe, I think. 
Uh, interesting though that you don't have any sort of sticker, as we saw on the water slide decal sheet earlier, we have a decal included here for the little bit there on the chest, but no stickers or anything uh, for like the mono eye or for this camera here. So while a lot of people don't like using those photo stickers for cameras and things, I think for people who would have wanted to use that, you may find it a little bit disappointing that you don't have any foil stickers included for these camera parts. But with this being clear, that's nice. You can paint that in whatever color you want. The mono eye on that note, is the of course visor here on the front is clear, but the actual mono eye piece in there is clear pink. So that's already in clear pink. So you may not want to use a sticker for that anyway, even if you do normally use the stickers. And then of course we do have just have a ton of leftover parts and not really much of them really being all that useful at least for customizing this kit but just throw those in your spare parts bin you never know when you might need some big parts but one thing that is worth noting is you do have all of the parts to make the original Rakuten Bazooka from the original Dom kit. Now, I haven't cleaned up the seam lines or the nub marks or anything on this, so it's looking a little rough at the moment, but just to illustrate to you guys that you do have all the parts for this. So this is a really cool weapon that you can definitely use, if not with this kit, just use it for any other Master Grade Xeon kits. I think it's work pretty cool. The front handle moves on this one as well. The ammo cartridge there at the back is removable like that. So it's a pretty cool weapon. So it's nice to have this as just like an extra thing just kind of thrown in there. Now as for the articulation, I covered that all in my review of the original Dwaj, and so I don't really need to go over that again in this video. If you're interested about the articulation, you can go back and check that video out. Uh, all the actual frame parts and everything is all exactly the same. So I'll just talk a little bit about some of the new parts for this here at the shoulders. This whole part will move up and down like that. And this front part is a little flap, which will move up and down. That's just a single piece there. You don't have a piece for like up on the inside of there. There's a little bit of detail, I guess, under there sort of but a, like a separate piece to go up underneath that I think would have been nice sort of like what you have for like the underside of the skirts which is just a, just an extra piece just to fill that in so it doesn't look like a hollow piece like that but just up over the shoulder that looks great you have this whole space all across the top of the shoulder and the front of the shoulder there's just this big flat empty space so going in and adding some details on that or just like sticking a huge water side decal or something over the top of that I think will be really cool just to help fill in that space but it's a cool part of the design I think and for the head we do have some articulation here but I have found while I was building this kit that the antenna on the top is just doesn't really want to stay in there very well it's not really plugged in so you'll definitely want to glue this in so you don't end up losing this part because it's just barely held in there but if you touch it at all poof it's going to fall out really super easily so just be careful with that the head does move a little bit side to side in here and a little bit kind of up and down sort of maybe a little bit but not really all that much so you can remove this part here on the front which will pull off the whole front visor there and then you can move the mono eye up and down and side to side within the head like that and you just slide the visor back in there like that to change the direction of the mono eye so that is pretty cool the one thing i am still disappointed about is that they totally redid this hip joint here and it's really nice except for that they didn't make any sort of new action base connector for that so it still doesn't have anywhere to plug on an action base now you could I use one of these to just plug up onto there but the problem with that is that the peg there is so thick and square shaped it doesn't fit between the prongs here of this action base adapter so you can't even really use this action base adapter for it either so there's kind of not really any good way as it is to put it up on an action base just straight out of the box you'll definitely have to modify something either the connector or the kit itself to make this to plug up onto an action base properly but we'll try out some action poses here in a minute one last thing that i do want to point out to you guys is that while the cockpit hatch does open here in the chest a little bit tricky to do so but like that here uh, there's no pilot figure included with this kit at all so you don't have a seated you don't have a standing pilot figure which is usually included of course in most master grades we don't have one included with this so i'm not exactly sure the reason why it just seems kind of odd if you guys can think of a reason why that would be let me know but it's kind of odd that they didn't just include the seated pilot figure now possibly just it was on a runner of the original dodge or the original dom kit that was not not needed for this kit so that's why they just didn't make it on one of the new runners or anything they just didn't think it was necessary but it's very strange all right so then here's a look at the two kits together and you can see they share a lot of the same design but a lot of very different parts as well this whole front skirt part can be very different between the two of them the whole torso and legs is pretty much exactly the same the arms are exactly the same just minus some different color swaps different shoulders obviously and then obviously different parts for the head as well now Personally, I prefer the look of the original Dodge, this kind of desert MSV type of design I kind of prefer. The Dodge guy definitely has that more space type, double zeta type sort of look to it with the color scheme with the designs of like the head and the beam cannon of course. If you're a fan of the Dodge or just the Dom in general, I would highly, highly recommend you guys get one of these kits because they're both really fantastic kits and really great improvements over the original Master Grade Dom. Now, they're going to be P-Bandai kits, so they're going to be more expensive of course, but I would highly recommend getting at least one of them. So 
whichever kind of style you prefer more and you've got some nice options between the two of them and it's pretty cool how they're kind of mostly a color swap but you do have some significant differences in the design and obviously the main weapon they're included for them as well. So while there's a lot to like about this kit, all the new parts are all great, the water slides included are great, the new weapons and everything, all that stuff is good. Just a couple of complaints that I would have is just the lack of a proper action base adapter point for this and this is just a very personal complaint but personally I don't really care for the fully articulated fingers. They're so fragile and you have to be so careful when you're posing the fingers very easy to break off a finger if you're not careful so I just don't really like those I much prefer just fixed pose hands so if there's one thing that I would have changed about this kit uh, oh well I guess two things a proper action base adapter would have been nice uh, and then also I would have preferred just like fixed pose hands but like with some different poses so like just like holding hands closed fist and then just a cool open expressive hand would have been nice just a set of hands for this just fixed pose even if they're just swappable fingers like we see with a lot of other master grades something like that would have been cool but otherwise I think this kit is really really nice now it does lack a lot of surface detail in some areas up on the top of the shoulders or on the legs you have a lot of areas on this kit where you have like wide open range with not a lot of detail on that so if you're the kind of person that likes a lot of surface detail in your kits then you may not really like that about this kit that said in this case I don't think that necessarily makes the kit look dated because a lot of times a lot lack of surface detail on a master grade kit will be like a, a giveaway that it's a little bit older one I don't think it necessarily makes it look older I think it just fits in with the design of the Dom but if you do want to add more detail on this the kit there's plenty of space to go in and do some custom scribing detail adding some photo etch parts or something whatever you want to add to maybe detail this up the design a little bit more but either way I still think that if you can stomach the cost this still makes for a really really cool kit I really like both versions of this so I'm looking forward to working on them more in the future but if you guys have any other further questions or comments about the kit feel free to leave those down in the comment section below again thank you to USA Gundam Store too for sponsoring this review if you want to check out the available P-Bandai kits on the site the link to USA Gundam Store is there down in the video description as always and you can use my coupon code there's Zakorelius10 to save 10% off everything in the store there also in the video description so thank you to them thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye bye.